Hey yo, this is Sean, and uh, I'm here back with another episode for this week of Teardown Tube. And as you can see, I've got this old uh, Palm Tungsten T2, which I actually found at a um, thrift store for like, I think I got it for like three or four bucks. And the thing wouldn't turn on, so it came with a docking cradle. And so I brought it home, charged it up, and it works like brand new, with the exception of um, some scratches on the, uh, the uh, digitizer area. But other than that, everything works perfectly. So let's go for a teardown. A uh, cool thing about this guy is the stylus is actually, um, it's a spring loader. You just push it to pop it out and it's magnetically, um, it sticks in there magnetically. But um, yeah, I also have an old tungsten E that I might do a teardown of another day. But let's do this guy. This guy's a very interesting sliding design right here where it hides the, uh, the writing area. And it also features Bluetooth, your standard SD card slot, a headphone jack. It has a microphone built in so that you can do voice recordings, as well as your standard array of uh, directional buttons as well as other um, shortcut buttons here. And you'll notice, as opposed to the Tungsten E, which has a standard uh, mini USB port, this guy has its proprietary uh jack there so I needed that dock port in order to charge it but uh, let's see if we can get this guy open so you can see there are two screws on the top that's a good place to start just be very careful not to strip anything there we go oh these guys are pretty long I might switch to a better screwdriver. One thing to be really careful careful about when taking things apart is um, stripping the screw heads because once you strip it, it is nearly impossible to get that screw out there. So it's always better to switch to a the right size head screwdriver to avoid stripping. That's why I have this multi-bit set here. Okay, with those out, let, let's just take out the SD card just in case. One thing I always hated about the palms, every time you insert an SD card or take it out, it just keeps turning itself on and off and it's just annoying. Like you don't need every time I insert an accessory or something, you don't have to turn yourself on, dude. Okay. And every time you you open this bottom part, it turns on. Ugh. This is going to be a pain, I can tell already. Okay. There are also two screws along the side here, on each side. So let's get those guys out. When taking things apart, I always like kind of separating the screws so that I can keep track of what goes where. It would really help if I had one of those uh, magnetic trays. You can just line screws up in there. Oh. One part of the side just popped right off. It's cracked. Let's go for the other side now. There we go. Looks like this piece is already starting to, to fall off. But I believe... Oh, here we go. So, thing to be careful about, there's actually, if you can see in there, there's actually a ribbon, two ribbon cables there that you have to be very careful about. Let's see if I can focus in on that. I really need to get a new camera. There we go, it's focused now. So you don't want to just tug this guy off because you'll end up breaking those. And if your intention was to reassemble this after you're done, yeah, it's not going to work out so well if you uh, just yank that sucker off there. Looks like I'm going to have to pull off this bezel. 
if I can. <laughs> Let's see. I have a million of these guys lying around. The, the iPod Pry tools are perfect for this sort of thing. It's interesting because the um, external shell is made out of metal, but there are plastic uh, adjoining pieces in here. So let's see. Ugh. Wants to be a pain. Oh, here we go. Okay, I just pried on this bottom piece right here. And that's still attached. Great. Okay, I see. It's attached via that ribbon connector. So to get that out, fortunately, yep, there are two screws on there. They really did not put this together with the intention of making it easy to take apart, I can tell you that much. So there are two uh, screws in there holding the duck pour it in. Once you move those, the bottom plastic bezel just lifts right off. And please don't lose the screws. <laughs> Keep that separate just so that I know what goes where. Keep track of screws. It's very important, especially if you want to put it back together like it was. So you'll see that ribbon connector that I was talking about with the, um, the dock port there. And so now, this part isn't going to give, and I feel like if I bend it too much, I'm going to break it. So for now, just let that chill out on the back. Let's see, just bringing this to the side, gently wiggling it out. Okay, so these are the, this uh, cable is the button uh flex cable there and then the other one is simply for the dock port and we can already see the edges of the digitizer right there let's see things aren't coming apart very easily it's always smart to check for any screws that you might have missed This is one of the more annoying things I've taken apart. <laughs> Wasn't really made for uh, repairs, taking apart for repairs. Well, when in doubt, start prying at uh, any edges that you can see there. It's already gotten in there. So hopefully this is the right way. As long as I hear a pop or a click or some sign of... Uh, it giving, I'll be happy. Why does it hate me? Oh, something's given. Oh, uh, yeah, let me get those screws. I just missed, entirely missed, two screws on the bottom here. Yeah, that might help if I take those guys out. <laughs> okay, yeah, there's a metal retaining uh, plate there. So once I get these screws off, that'll pop right off. Yep. This little guy right here. Set that aside. Jeez, just screws. Don't lose them. Once again, every screw is like a different length in here. <laughs> it's gonna be a pain keeping track. Okay, now can I pry? Yes. There we go. Now it's coming out. No. Oh. Normally, when I take something apart, I'll put it on lock or hold so that I don't switch.
switch it on while I'm taking it apart because this every button that you press on this it'll turn it on it's my biggest annoyance so far and I don't believe there's a way of uh, stopping that up oh, something's given come on yeah hopefully this video isn't too long but uh if not oh well fast forward through the stuff that you don't like Oh, this is so close to coming off. This reminds me of the time that first time I opened up um, an iPod Nano. Thing was a pain. Oh my god. I might do a teardown for you guys. Just for you guys to watch me struggle for 10 minutes with the uh, smallest piece of. Ugh. Let's keep it G rated though. Um, come on. This is like so close to coming out. And it keeps turning itself on. Damn it. Don't have access to the battery, so it can't exactly pull power first. Like, literally, there's like almost nothing holding this guy in. And I keep hitting that power switch. Darn it. Well, pull this sucker out. It's like only one clip, I bet you, holding this guy in. Yet I can't find it. Really don't want me getting in here. There we go. Something snapped. Let's hope that was a good snap. <laughs> there we go. Now everything's popping out. Just got the front bezel frame. Let's see what we got here. You have some uh, pieces of metal. I assume these are the contact points for the antenna. Because it does have uh, Bluetooth in there. And, let's see, oh jeez. Should just pop out. Sorry about shaky hands. <laughs> just trying not to break anything. I do want to get it, there we go. And the battery is being held in by a little snap connector right there. So you just use your fingernails to get in there, pull it finally. Oh god, that was annoying. Okay. <laughs> so let's see the back of the device. Uh right here you'll see the um two spring connect uh they're basically like little springs that mount to um uh the pads on the PCB for the uh, built-in speaker. And let's see what else. It looks like the entire, the bottom button and the dock connector travel via cable to this um, uh, dual row connector right here which slots into the uh, the mating connector on the main board right here. You got your battery. Let's see what this guy has. It's a 3.7 volt 900 mAh battery in there. Standard lithium ion. I've seen a million of them. Nothing all that surprising. Battery life's actually pretty good on this. I've been playing around. And this is a used old device. I mean. <laughs> and let's see. It's actually interesting the um, sliding mechanism. I'm trying to see how the heck you get that out. Okay, so let me see if I can pull this guy out. I'm gonna need flathead. Maybe this side. Maybe a smaller one. Jeez, video's already uh, 
14 minutes and I haven't even gotten the whole thing apart. Hope you guys don't mind. <laughs> Come on. Get in there. I'd rather get out of there. There we go. Finally got the sliding mechanism off. There are just these two um, metal clips here that you have to pry up from the other side in order to uh, slide out the piece fully. Okay, well, let's get going with uh, the rest of the device. The most interesting part, the main board and the LCD. Uh, let's get our pry tool. It looks like your standard, um, just a press fit Molex connector of some sort in here. Be careful while prying these. Just want to get up in there. There we go. And now the screen is free. beautiful. You can see it's basically just the digitizer piece mounted directly over the LCD with the um, it's gonna be five wires it looks like. It's just your standard run-of-the-mill resistive screen there. Runs into this connector here and the LCD cable itself wraps around to right here and it looks like they're gonna have a controller chip for the touch screen as well as some driving circuitry for the LCD itself it's pretty cool how it's, it's an entire single module though but um, I'm not going to pry it off now but I would wonder if you could actually lift the digitizer in case you crack just the LCD or destroy the digitizer if you could replace them separately but it's pretty cool how this is one entire module and how thin, well not very thin nowadays but you know, back when this came out, this was probably very thin. So, let's see. Next, we have the main board. And you can see right in the center here is the uh, Texas Instruments OMAP processor. Let's see. I'm seeing an AMD chip right in here. You got Texas Instruments, of course. <laughs> And let's see. It's actually interesting. This little guy is the switch. Um, when you slide it open and close, that's what detects these bars or not. So it can tell when it's being opened. It'll turn itself on. Annoyingly, I say. But anyway, that's that's what it does. And you've got IR communications up at the top right here. Uh, power button. This is your record button. You got the microphone right next to it. There's a pinhole in the case for that. And your standard 3.5 millimeter uh, headphone jack right there. This looks like a uh, grounding clip, so it grounds to the chassis. You've got your standard SD card slot, but it's uh, reverse mounted. So you put in the card upside down with what you normally would. Clicks right in there, clicks out. Then you've got a one of those little cell phone uh, vibration motors in here. It has the counterweight. It's um, not balanced so that it vibrates. Which is interesting that you would need that on a device without cellular connection. As if like, you know, <laughs> I guess for like alarms and stuff. But anyway, we've got some, sh we got a shielding can here. I can't tell what's underneath it and I don't want to have to bring out my hot air gun to, to pull it off probably rather destructively. You have your uh, reset uh, button here, a crystal oscillator, some inductors, uh, it looks like some power regulation because you can tell by its proximity to the battery. And that's pretty much it. You can see that it's a Rev A board. Pretty interesting though. It's actually really cool if you if you can get a close up if this guy will focus. Come on man, focus. 
can't tell if it's getting better or not. Come on. I wish I had macro on this guy. Well, that's the best I can do on here. But um, you can see the the snaking. This guy is a BGA chip. The snaking uh, connects going all out from the processor chip there. And no doubt, underneath this SD card, you'll find a whole bunch of vias to get out all those trapped I.O. All the trap pins. Other than that, yeah, I got to tear apart my other Palm computer just to see, just to see how it how it uh, looks there, uh, and compare it to this. I'll post that video later, but uh, that's for another week. Let's go and reassemble this and turn it back on, and hope to God that it turns on. <laughs> okay, just push until it clicks. And mounting it in the front case. Be careful to when you go to insert the headphone jack to kind of put it in at an angle so it doesn't catch or anything. Make sure it's in the hole. And now this is going to be a pain. Try to get the battery in there. Wish I had a million hands sometimes. Annoying systems design. Why couldn't they use like springs or something for the damn jack? Okay, so the battery's in now. Now they should just kind of pop together. And it does. And it turned itself on. Again. Okay. Now let's reconnect the bottom portion, the dock and everything. Things together. Now to reinsert, reinsert this piece here. I believe you should kind of just have to... Maybe I shouldn't have pulled this part off. No. no, just push down and push up at the same time. Please, for the love of God. This is going to haunt my nightmares. Oh, I heard a click. Click's always good. Ah, sweet. Okay, be careful of this uh, ribbon connector here. Now, if I can just jimmy this on. And it's in. Okay, just checking. It didn't turn itself on that one time. Kind of freaked me out. I thought I killed it. Okay. Now, before I do anything else, stop turning yourself on and off. I should actually... Why must you torment me? Put in the dock piece, because I can tell already this is going to be a pain. Push this in, hold this with one hand while you use your five others to get the damn screw in. Jeez, this is really a pain in the pain in the butt to open and <laughs> just as uh, difficult to close. Most new devices I've taken apart are really user friendly other than, you know, extraneous uh, amounts of residue. They use like glue nowadays to like shut everything but most devices all you need is a screwdriver really and that's about it maybe pry at a few places okay now let's get this on this is probably going to be a pain isn't it to screw this in because if you see the angle that it has to screw in Actually, no, that might not be too bad. I love it when you take something apart and you have like two screws left and you're like, oh god, hopefully they weren't very important. <laughs> and it's in.
believe we're nearing the end. Oh, okay. I just saw two screws over here, and I just forgot entirely what the heck they were for. It scared me for a second. I'm like, oh, God, not again. And finally, we just have our four screws on the side, bottom side here, connecting the top and bottom halves. Uh-oh, 25 minutes, running a little long. So I didn't anticipate this taking so long to put together, but a lot of slide devices are simply a pain to get together. Come on. Come on, attaboy. There we go. Good boy. See, it helps if you talk to your electronics as you're taking them apart. You gotta talk nicely, you know, you, you can't yell at it. Use positive reinforcement. That's a good palm computer. Attaboy. Okay, shut it. It still turns on, that's a good sign. And finally, two more screws and we are out of the woods. Kind of sad to think that uh, palm computers have gone the way of the dodo. I mean, they, they don't hold a candle to modern uh, Android. Slot in that guy. And it beeps, so it's, uh, it's at least working. And annoyingly, you have to calibrate the resistive screen. Yeah, whatever. I don't, I don't think it has my state in. Anyway, whatever. I know how to use graffiti. Go away. And you can see that everything still works. Recover from crash file not found. <laughs> so many errors. Okay. Uh, let's just um, run a quick little NES game just to show you that it still works. out of memory. Great. Oh, I know what it is. Sorry. You have to use the more heap. Heck, I don't think I enabled this. Sorry about that detour. I know! Annoying pop-ups, the bane of my existence. Now will you work? Yes! Okay. Please? I forget what I set the buttons for. Ah. Uh, running a little slow, 15 frames per second, and it all works. I knew it would. Let's see if I had a quick load. Oh, I did apparently have a quick load. Slot. Running a little bit slow. Anyway, everything works. What more can I say? I did notice that this is this must be an earlier model than the tungsten E because this is actually a good deal slower. I can play most uh, NES games on my tungsten E at full speed. So that's pretty much it for my this week's uh, teardown. Palm Tungsten T2. Old model Palm computer. Gotta love them. Um, I'll be back with something new next week. I, I got drawers full of uh, old electronic devices. And I go out maybe every two weeks or so to local thrift stores and see what they got. You know, if I can get a deal on something. So, uh, I'll see you guys next week then, I guess. Uh, if you guys like what I'm doing here, you know, comment, like, subscribe, do whatever the hell you want. You know what? But um, I'll see you guys next time. Over and out.